song that we just heard, for Jason's ability to sing it and minister it to us. I thank you for what you have planned and purposed for this service this morning. I'm asking that for the next few minutes that you would grant unto me, your servant, the ability to speak the word that you have put upon my heart, that's burning in my heart. I'm asking, Father, may the Holy Spirit go before me, touch each and every individual here this morning that would receive with understanding what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. May we receive it, believe it, and live it. I ask it in Jesus' name today. Father, as I stand before this congregation, again, I acknowledge that in myself, I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. Therefore, I'm asking for the next few minutes of time, that fresh anointing that only you can give. I ask it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. We're going to be looking in the book of Habakkuk, and then Book of Acts, and then First Thessalonians. So turn with me, if you will, to the book of Habakkuk. And this is what we find in chapter 1. I'm going to read the first four verses. And in chapter 2, I'm going to read the first three verses. I ask you to listen to what the Word is saying. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. I ask you to hear and listen to what he's asking God. This is a conversation that he and God are having. He has some troubling questions that he wants answers for. I ask you as I read it, you see it, compare it with where we are today. Listen to what God is saying to us. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and for violence? are all before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth commit a compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. I ask you to think about for a minute before I go on. Here, the life that we're living today, there's never before in our time been the violence, the wickedness, the immoralness that there is today. Many are crying out. We're crying out for revival, but we're also crying out, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We're ready for him to come. We're tired of what we are living in. The ungodliness, the immoralness, the wickedness, things that are going on that are really not, should not even be talked about. But it's happening among us. The Bible tells us what's going to happen in the end times. Second Timothy chapter 3 tells us that in the last days shall be perilous times. Folks, that's what we're living in right now. Perilous times. Chapter 2, verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon the ta tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Again, 
He's telling us in his word that time is running short. He's going to soon be coming. Okay, now let's go to Acts, book of Acts. I want chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. And when he had spoken these words, okay, what the setting of the scripture is, Jesus is about to go back to heaven. So he's walking down the road with the disciples. He's giving them last minute instructions that he wants them to do. He's also spending the last minutes on earth with his disciples. Those that have been with him, those that have walked with him, served him, stayed with him. He's been in his last minutes with them. So while they're walking together and talking, okay, this is what happens. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. With your permission, I want to reread that verse to us. And I want to comment on it. Which also said, Jesus walking along, he said, which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? I want to pause there. And there is a question there that every one of us need to hear and to answer. We have been told what to do as believers. We have been told what to do. We are to go out and share our faith all over the world. We're not supposed to hold it in. It's the Great Commission. We are commissioned to share our testimony, to share it with others, to see others saved. So he said, why stand you gazing up into heaven? Why aren't we about, in other words, why aren't we about our Father's business? What are we doing with it? Are we doing anything and then we go on. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. Notice again, telling us again that Jesus is coming back for us. He's coming back for us. It's a stated fact, and it's going to happen. Okay. Which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as you have seen him go into heaven. You have seen him go. And now, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's a very familiar portion of scripture, one that I talk about quite a bit, because the Lord has laid it heavily upon my heart. Jesus is coming, and we must be ready. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Let me ask you, before I go on, let me ask you, is your ear in, in tune with him? Are you listening for the sound of that trumpet? Are you really listening for that great shout? A great shout with the voice of an archangel. Next verse, please. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is what the Lord has put upon my heart. I want to speak to you today then about the rapture of the church. You say, Pastor, 
We're spending a lot, a lot of time talking about the rapture because the Lord has put it on my heart to make his people know that he's soon coming. We have to get ourselves ready. We need every day to do an attitude check. We need to go over our thoughts. We need to go over what we've done and how we're doing. Where are we in our relationship with Jesus? Folks, remember, and I'm speaking to the church, remember, there will be no time for repentance after that trumpet sounds. We know how we are to live. We know what the Bible tells us to do and how to be. We need to be asking ourselves every day, am I living up to the standard? Am I living up to the standard? Okay. I want to read the word again, the words of Habakkuk. Would you bring it back for me, please, David? Habakkuk, chapter two, please. Habakkuk, chap chapter two. And let's li listen carefully to what the Lord is saying to us. Praise God. All right, here it is. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer. Now remember, Habakkuk has been asking God questions. He's disturbed because there's so much violence, so much sin, so much corruption going on. And he's asking the Lord to, to settle it, to, just to come. So he's saying, and set me upon the watch, uh, pardon me, on the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and I sh what I shall answer him when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, write the vision, and make it plain upon the tablets, that he may run that readeth it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Let's pause there a moment. God has appointed a time for everything he does. He has an appointed time for it. He has an appointed time for the rapture of the church. And it's about to come. So write the vision and make it plain. Okay. But at the end, it, it's a, it, for, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. We are in that time, folks. He is coming soon. There are two things here that the Holy Spirit has quickened to my heart. And I want you to see them today. One, write the vision and make it plain. That he may run that reads it. That, in other words, whoever reads it needs to be run to spread it about. To tell others what's going on. What's about to happen. To see and make sure that you try to get others ready for what's going to happen. Because he said... It will surely come. It will surely come in God's appointed time. Okay. Folks, I believe with all of my heart that God, through his Holy Spirit, is trying to make us aware of the day. I attended a special meeting Wednesday. It was a luncheon for ministers and uh, lay leaders in the church. And then any other people wanted to come. Folks, there were over 80 people that attended that meeting. The majority of them, pastors, assisted pastors, youth leaders, those working in the church. We had three different preachers speaking to us. The main topic, revival and rapture. Getting people ready for the coming of the Lord. There was such a beautiful spirit present. Some singing, worshiping, 
than the messages. But it caused me and many others I know, it caused us to leave there with a burning desire in our heart. We know people, the family members, friends, neighbors that are not ready to meet the Lord. Those many attend church, they're not really ready yet to meet the Lord. The Lord's putting a burden in our hearts to get the word out, to get the message out. Okay. The Holy Spirit's trying to make us aware. Romans chapter 13 verse 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now is our salvation near. This verse of scripture is not talking about the salvation of our souls. It is speaking about the rapture of the church. God saving us out of all that's going on in this wicked world. Taking us home to be with him. That home that he has prepared for every true believer. Again, Jason, I want you to know I loved that song. Naming those places that some, many of us will want to be. All of us will want to be. You know, I, I've got <clears throat> several of the disciples and the other men in the Bible that I want to ask some questions. I just want to talk to them and find out a little bit more than I've gotten in the Bible. For instance, I, I really want, in my office, I have a picture on my wall that I was given. Dave and Darla gave it to me for Christmas. And it's of the Red Sea parting. Such, it's a beautiful picture, the color tones and, and all, but the message. The waters are parting. There's a, a row going right down the middle. And it has, shows the people marching across. I want to ask Moses, what, <clears throat> what was it like standing there watching the water start to part and build up? What did you feel? Seeing how the, you'd already seen many miracles while they were in Egypt. He saw all the miracles that God did coming up to the being kept in the wilderness. Now standing at the Red Sea, trying to cross over to go on to where God's taking them. Seeing those waters stand. Can you imagine what the noise must have been like? The shouting of the people. Going across, shouting, excited, praising the Lord. Moses, what was it like? And then I want to talk to Saul. So, what was it like when you were caught up into the third heaven? And you got to see all of this so far ahead. Everything was revealed to you. Can you imagine that? I want to ask you how he felt. What was it like? I could go on. There's so many that I want to talk to. But I liked what the song said. Don't look for me here. Don't look for me here. Don't, don't look for me here. Look for me at the feet of Jesus. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. The song we sing. One day, it's soon, it's going to be a reality for us. I want to see it. So I ask you, think about it. When he speaks about that, so our salvation is soon about to come. He's talking about Jesus is coming for you and for me. Are we ready? Think about it. Okay. You may say, Pastor, we know that. We have heard it over and over and over. There's a danger in that. <clears throat> well, what well, could be a danger in that pasture? We've heard it so much that we just kind of block it out. Oh yeah, I've heard that. 
Have we heard it strong enough that we know it's going to happen, we believe it's going to happen, and we want it now? Jesus, come. Jesus, come. Church, listen to me. And that knowing the time, the verse I shared with and knowing time is high time. Now, like I said, <clears throat> we've heard it so many times. Are we just kind of passing over it? Or are we believing it with all of our heart and crying out, even so, come today, Jesus. Come today. Okay. I ask you then, think about this for a moment. You think again of Habakkuk, chapter 1, his complaint to the Lord. You're, you're causing me to see all of this wickedness, to feel the hurting over it. Where is the answer? I ask you, look about you. Look about us. The signs are everywhere, everywhere. Are we really seeing them? Are we really seeing them? Are we connecting them? Jesus is very soon coming. Yes, folks, the vision has been written in the Word of God. It is burning in my heart. My, may the Holy Spirit open our spiritual eyes and cause every one of us to see it. My prayer for this service today is, <clears throat> Father, open our spiritual eyes, every one of us. Open our spiritual eyes that through the eyes of the Spirit we will see what you're doing and how soon and how quickly it's going to come. That we will make sure that we are ready. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. God's already got the time appointed. <clears throat> it's not something he has to think about. He's already appointed the time. He knows the exact day and hour. And he's ready. He's ready. He had appointed a time when all things shall happen. I want us to understand, no man, no power or authority can change that calendar. What calendar am I talking about? creation day, God had a calendar. All things that are, were ever going to happen or are going to happen are recorded in his calendar. It's on his calendar. What time it's going to happen, okay? The time, the set time is on his calendar, just like a clockwork. It's just like clockwork. Tick, tick, tick. Each thing that he's planned and purposed it's going off. It's being passed. It's being done. It's a perfect clock. It doesn't miss a beat. It happens just like he says it will. The events have fallen in place just as he determined them. <clears throat> Let's consider this. The flood. The flood. Genesis chapter 6. Why was the flood? What was the reason for the flood? If you read it in your Bibles, you'll see. It says that man was so wicked, so vile, so violent, that it grieved God's heart that he ever created man. It grieved his heart. To the point that God finally said, I am going to destroy every human being that I've created. But, folks, God has a big heart. Even in the condition they were in, God still loved them. They were his. But they weren't listening. They wouldn't change. But as I read on, I find a little joy there. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man. He wasn't joining with the whatever you're doing, I'll do. He was holding the standard. So God told him what he was going to do. He told him he was going to use him and all of his family. And the rest is history. It was on God's calendar. It's happened. It's past. 
So think about it. And then Abraham is on that calendar. He's on that calendar. <clears throat> God made him the father of a great nation, as he said he would. Everything that God spoke to Abraham that he was going to do, God did it. Everything. That part of the calendar has been fulfilled. In Genesis chapter 15, God said to Abraham, and Ruth and I were talking about that this week, about the children of Israel being slaves in Egypt. Here, this is what God said. Know for a surety, know for a surety, that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and shall be afflicted of them 400 years. God told Abraham, way years before it ever happened. It was on the counter. The day that it was to be done arrived and they're in Egypt. Multitude. Being slaves. Not getting paid for it. Okay, think about it. But God had this to say. Now remember, they're being beaten, they're being tormented, they're being persecuted, they're being driven to do, build roads, to build pyramids, to build house, uh, palaces. But they don't get paid for it. They're slaving away. But God said, I will judge that nation and afterwards they shall come out with great substance. God said, when I judge Egypt, I'm going to bring the children of Israel out. But they're not coming out poor. They're going to come out with great substance. If you take time to read it, you'll find out how wealthy they were and how God intended to bless them and also use what he was bringing out with them. Okay. And though Pharaoh and all his army tried, they could not stop it or change it. It happened as God said it would. <clears throat> After the Lord began to speak that to my heart, I went over it in my mind. I even would look the scriptures up and look at some of it. It was exciting. God does what he says he's going to do. Now, it was years after God spoke that word to Abraham. It was years before it was fulfilled. And then it's 430 years before they're brought out. Okay. But God blessed them. He paid them for those 430 years of slavery. You remember I said a little bit earlier, what God has put on the calendar, no man can stop it. There's no power or authority that can stop it. God's going to do. Whoop, I want to ask you. Let's stop for a minute and think about something. Some of you, God has spoken to. He's told you he's going to do something for you or with you. It's been a long time, and you're asking over and over again, Lord, did I miss you? Lord, did I really hear you? Lord, where's the promise? Where is it? God's going to do it. It's on his counter. He told you you would do it. It's go he's going to do it. Don't give up. Keep praising him. Pre keep worshiping. And then God says something like this. I've often wondered why. <clears throat> why did God say this? What, Pastor? God said, call me into remembrance. It's in the Bible, folks. Call me into remembrance. And for the so longest time, I kept asking myself, why would God say that? God doesn't forget. So why did he say it? He doesn't need to be called into remembrance. But we need it. 
when we call him into remembrance, then we're reminded, we're saying and what he's promised us. We're reminded you know, of it. And so doing it, we're just showing him, Lord, I haven't forgotten it. I'm still believing you for it. So what God has spoken to you, get into your prayer closet and talk to him. Remind him of it. Because in doing so, you remind yourself. And you remind yourself that God doesn't forget and he does what he says he would do. We spoke about that so many times. Okay. Then we want to go on and say, God's calendar was and is in motion. Okay. The promises, think about it, the promise of the birth of Jesus. It came just like it was prophesied, what it, what, like it is prophesied in the Bible. His death and his resurrection that was on God's counter, it's, it's done. Done it just like he said he would. His ascension into the right hand of the Father, we, should, we read about it this morning. While he's walking and talking with the disciples, up he goes. Where is he at? Seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Making intercession. He's there. It was on God's calendar. It's there. Okay. His death and his resurrection. That's been on his calendar. He's fulfilled it. Okay. His ascension to the right hand of the Father, I just told you. Okay. Listen. What were the disciples doing when Jesus ascended into heaven? They were walking and talking with him. And suddenly he was taken up. God's calendar is in motion. And at any moment, God's going to say, Gabriel, go get your children. Go get your children. Jesus is coming back. He's coming for us. There's going to be a loud shout. There's going to be a trumpet sound, a loud shout. I've often wondered, matter of fact, I've asked you in the past, I don't know what the Lord's going to shout. I don't know what it's going to be. But I do know this. We will hear it if we're watching and waiting for Him. It will be loud and clear. And we're going to start rising just like He did. Just like he did. Okay. Are we really ready? John the Revelator says this in Revelation 19.7. The marriage supper of the Lamb is come. And his bride has made herself ready. We're going to a banquet, folks. We're going to a banquet. Okay. So I ask you to think about it. Do we think about it? He's coming. He's coming. Jesus is soon coming. The Lord has placed that on my heart. And I can't keep silent. I cry out, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Bow your head with me, please. Father, this morning, I thank and praise you for the privilege of preaching your gospel trying to preach the message that you have given me. I'm asking, Father, may the Holy Spirit take the message, quicken it to every one of our hearts. Start that fire burning deep within our hearts, or that we would start looking, start crying out unto you. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. It's going to happen. I thank you for it. Now I'm going to ask again, are we watching? Are we waiting? Are we really holding on to it? He could come today. If there's any here that, that are not ready, just take a few minutes. Take a few minutes and ask him. Ask him to forgive you, to come into your heart. You want to be ready to go home with him. So just say, Lord, make me ready. Forgive me and make me ready. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.